Is this the worst OET writing answer ever? Before we can find out, let's remind ourselves of what exactly it is that the OET examiners like in a writing assignment. Well, here we have the marking criteria that they use. We can see that there are one, two, three, four, five, six criteria. The first one, purpose. This is about how the document conveys the reason for your writing. Normally we want in the first paragraph to summarize the who, the what, the why, and the when to score well on the purpose criterion. Then we have the content. This is asking, have we chosen information from the case notes, which is relevant for continuing care, which is relevant for the person receiving or reading the letter. And conciseness and clarity really covers similar information, again, about whether or not we've put in the right information, or if on the other hand, we've put in irrelevant information. I should say that the difference is that content also um, is judging whether or not you put incorrect information in the letter or not. And that can happen if you get confused about the dates, maybe, or about the names, then you're going to make mistakes and that will lead to problems with getting marks in the content section. Genre and style. Are we um, communicating in a way that is formal, that's appropriate for a doctor writing to another healthcare worker. Then we have organization and layout. How are we presenting the information in our letter? And I'm gonna show you very shortly an amazing mnemonic um, that will be an indispensable tool for you in the future so that you know exactly how to structure your letter when you come to write it on exam day. And then finally, language. This is the spelling, the punctuation, the vocabulary, the grammar, the sentence structure. It goes on and on. So this is really just summarizing what we've just seen. Although it shows here purpose, that's only worth three points. The other five are worth seven points each. And if we want to get that B grade, then we need 70%. And a B is uh, what is accepted, at least by the General Medical Council of Britain. If you get a B, that's it, you're in. You can start moving forward with the process of working in English or British hospitals. So here's a summary of everything that we just saw. These are the six criteria that the OET used to assess you. I'm just going to emphasize a few things that I think are really important. The first being that your initial paragraph should communicate, as I said at the beginning, the who, the what, the why, and the when. Here we have a model answer which does just that. We see it says, thank you for seeing Ms. Hall, a 45-year-old secondary school teacher. Right there then, we've answered the who. The what, what is it that we want? Well, we want further investigation and an endoscopy. And why? She has gastroesophageal reflux with possible stricture. The when? Well, she presented today with a two week history. It's always good to get just a little bit of information about the timeline in that. There will be information in your case notes about the timeline, the dates of the first consultation and the second, maybe and the third, and for how long those symptoms have been going on. That's information that you could put very briefly into the beginning paragraph in order to get the who, the what, the why, the when, and to make your first paragraph an effective summary of what the entire letter underneath is going to be all about. Once you get that first paragraph right, the rest of the letter practically writes itself. All you're doing is expanding 
on those main points in the first paragraph in the paragraphs below. Now the layout, this mnemonic is really going to save you so much time wandering and thinking about exactly how to structure it. In the future, just be a robot and mindlessly remember this mnemonic and reproduce it. So what does it say? It says, attentive doctors don't smoke drugs in emergency rooms. Well, I think we can all agree with that. If you were a doctor smoking in an emergency room, you certainly wouldn't be an attentive one now, would you? So what does this mean? Well, A, address. That's what you want to put at the top of your letter. D, date. That's what you're going to put underneath the address. The second D, dear, the name of the person to whom you're writing. S, the subject of your letter. The subject will say R, E, which means regarding. R, E, and then colon, those two dots. And then write the name of the patient, their title, their first name, and their last name. So, for example, Mr. Joe Bloggs. Or the full subject line would be RE regarding Mr. Joe Bloggs. Next, DOB. What does DOB stand for? Date of birth. That's what is going to go underneath the subject line. I. This is your intro paragraph. Remember, we were just saying that the intro paragraph is going to be very important in beginning your letter with the who, the what, the why, and the when, and summarizing the whole case very briefly. E, this E stands for expand. We're going to try and expand in just two paragraphs underneath the introductory paragraph. More about that in a moment. Finally, the R, this is the request. The final paragraph is going to close with a request. The request will tell the person reading the letter what it is exactly that you want them to do for you, whether it be to see a patient if they're a specialist consultant, or it could, on the other hand, be discharge the patient. It could be any number of things depending on the example which you are given on exam day. Quickly pause the video and ask yourself, can I remember what those seven letters stand for using only the mnemonic? Pause, pause it and think. Okay, I'm going to assume that you paused it. Here are the answers once again. There you see them. Okay, that's how the mnemonic works. Now, I said about the expanding paragraphs, didn't I? After the introductory paragraph, we have an expanding section. That's going to look like this. You're going to have one paragraph in which you summarize all of the treatment that was given in the previous consultations. And then in the second expanding paragraph, you're going to talk about how the patient is today on the most recent consultation and you're going to talk about your recommendations for that patient. We can see a perfect example of that here from another model OET answer and it is showing the way that these two expanding paragraphs should be divided. Now let's do what we came for. Yes, let's look at what is possibly the worst answer to an OET writing exam ever. So we see in this bad letter, the first paragraph fails at conveying at communicating the who, the what, the why, and the when, which is the important job that the first paragraph has to do. Instead, in this bad letter, 
all kinds of details are given immediately, but not the overall picture. However, paragraph four, it says, if you look at the bad letter, you'll see that paragraph four could possibly be moved up to the top because it does go some distance towards describing those important who, what, where, why, uh, and when details that we need. The content, we see that today's date is missing from the letter. The person who wrote this was not thinking about our mnemonic. They forgot to write the date. Another common problem is uh, to write today's date, the day of the writing of the letter in real life, that date. No, 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 no. In the case notes, it will tell you, assume today's date is, mm -mm 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 -mm. and you want to write on your letter, mm -mm 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 -mm. you don't want to write today's date. No, don't do that. We also see this bad letter is addressed to the wrong person. Uh, they've actually addressed it to the patient instead of to the doctor. And the timeline is all wrong. They've said that the patient complained a year ago, that they first complained a year ago, um, when in fact it was a month ago. So the timeline is all wrong. Conciseness and clarity. Well, all sorts of information has been included that really should not have been. For example, about the fact that she lost her husband, how many children she has, how much she smokes, how much she drinks, all kinds of information that the person reading the letter will not be interested in. Well, perhaps they'll be interested, but only as gossip. They really don't need the information in order to continue care. When you write your letter, make sure that only the absolutely essential information is included. Genre and style. We see that all kinds of mistakes have been made. For example, it says, take this patient from me, using the imperative, take the patient, as though it were something terrible that you don't want to hold anymore. Take it, take it. It's rude. It is absolutely inappropriate and it would score poorly on the genre and style element. Also, it uses language like tragically. It says she tragically lost her husband. This is far too emotive and it is not conforming to the clinical style that we need to achieve. Finally, sorry, penultimately, the organization and layout, they have not followed the structure that we saw earlier. Attentive doctors don't smoke drugs in emergency rooms. That's the mnemonic we need to follow. They have not done that and they've missed out important parts uh, from the letter which need to be in there. And finally, language. There are all kinds of mistakes in this letter. It is a car crash. It is the worst response to an OET exam question ever. That then concludes our discussion. Here is the bad letter. What would a good letter look like there? That's what you're thinking now, isn't it? What would a good letter look like? Well, luckily, I have one of those. I have what would have been the perfect response to exactly this question in the OET exam. And here it is. You can also download this below in the description. We see the address goes at the top. Yes, they're following this mnemonic. Look, it's beautiful. Look at the structure. We've got the address, the date, the dear, the subject, the date of birth. And then here, the first paragraph, neatly, briefly, concisely, um, tells you the who, the what, the where, the when. All of it is uh, communicated to us in only two short little sentences. And then it's expanded upon. And in the first expanding paragraph, we have the information 
from the previous consultations. And then in the second of the two expanded paragraphs, we have the information from the most recent consultation, exactly how it should be. Finally, we have a very polite little request paragraph in which we tell the person reading our letter what it is that we would like them to do. Not what we want them to do right now. No, that's not very polite. What we would like them to do as soon as possible, please, if at all possible. Yes, we need to be very polite. If you're having problems with the LET writing section, don't worry, because I offer individualized feedback. Look down below for more details.